I never, I never do this. I've never done this in all, any of these videos. You know it. But, uh, but these are extraordinary times, right? And so you might be watching this video sometime from now, and what I'm saying now is completely irrelevant, and you're like, say what? But today, right now, right now, is Friday, April 3rd. And Florida and Georgia just issued stay-at-home orders, and things are really different right now. And that's what gave me the impetus to go ahead and start making these videos again so that everyone across the country doing Eureka Math can have a little bit more support. Um, and so I have to thank my students, because they're awesome, and my children, because I love them. And I have to thank Grandma Nancy, who I talked to today, and her uh, granddaughter, Ashlyn, is nine years old and goes to Shady Hills Elementary in Newport Ritchie, Florida, you know, says that they really appreciate what I'm doing here. And I tell you, that makes me feel great. But I want to tell you that you can do so as well. So if you're talking to a classmate online, you can go and help somebody with their Eureka Math or whatever they're working on, or just give them somebody to talk to. Because that's a great thing to have right now, isn't it? All right. So, hi, Ashlyn. Shout out. Let's get to the math. It's lesson time. Yes. Lesson time. Module 6, lesson 4, more with the decimals. Let's see what we're doing. Meters. Remember the meter stick? I wish I had one. And, uh, yeah, meters, right? We're going to use a meter to model the decomposition of one whole, so think one whole meter, into hundredths, those are the centimeters, okay, because there are 100 centimeters in a meter. Now this harkens all the way back to module two, which was quite some time ago, I'm sure, um, but there it is. And then we will represent and count hundredths. What does that look like? Like this, okay. Well, there is a sprint on this one, so if you're gonna do that, go ahead and uh, do that. Pause the video. Do side A, do side B, number correct on both, and how much you improve for side B. The idea of a sprint is running fast, like getting a little quicker at this, so it's becoming more of an intuition habit. So we're going to count by tenths. Here we go. Zero tenths, two tenths, four tenths, six tenths, eight tenths, ten tenths, twelve tenths, fourteen tenths, sixteen tenths, eighteen tenths, twenty tenths. And we won't recount the whole thing, but you can see how zero tenths is equal to the whole number zero, 10 tenths is equal to the whole number one, and 20 tenths is equal to the whole number two. Makes sense, right? Good, I hope so. Oh, knitting, cool. Allie, knitting fiend that she is, is knitting a scarf that will be two meters long. Now that is a big scarf, because like, that's a meter. Okay, and so, like, I can't even do two meters, really, with my arms. So that's a pretty good scarf there, Allie. Rock on, sister. It's gonna, hopefully she's tall enough it won't drag on the ground. Two-meter-long scarf. So far, she has knitted one and two-tenths meters. Nice job. Two questions. A, how many more meters does Allie need to knit to complete the scarf? We'll write the answer as a fraction and a decimal. How many more centimeters? Okay, so, so, so first we're doing meters. So the answer will be either a fraction or a mixed number. We're gonna have a whole number in the decimal, okay? And then when we get to centimeters, that'll be how many centimeters? What does that look like? It looks like this, let's do it. Okay, so the whole scarf is two meters. So your tape diagram is going to look like this. Two meters is the whole thing. We know this part, one and two tenths. Ah, this is very familiar, is it? You know the whole, you know a part, there's an unknown part. When, that's why we draw these. So you can see we are subtracting to find the difference between what she has and what she needs. So we'll go ahead and do that. Two minus one and two tenths. Well, let's think about that. How can we do it? That's right, we can decompose two as one whole and 10 tenths, because then the one minus one is zero. And then we just do 10 tenths minus two tenths leaves all right, eight tenths. Okay, so she is eight tenths of a meter. And is that a correct answer? Eight tenths meter? That is a correct answer. She has eight tenths meter left. 
Now, when we get to part B, uh, how many centimeters? We know that one tenth of, uh, ooh, this is actually an error. Hmm. That should be one tenth of a meter. And that's not my mistake. I copied that from Eureka, so, but it's my mistake in missing it. So I'm catching it now. Look, that's, I'm crossing out that C. It should say one tenth of a meter is 10 centimeters. Therefore, eight tenths of a meter is 80 centimeters. See, it's correct here, but it's incorrect there. I'll have to fix that someday. All right. So she needs to knit 80 more centimeters. So there are both um, answers. Eight tenths meter. 80 centimeters. Nice job, Allie. Knit, knit, knit. Moving on. Now we're getting to the heart of the lesson. One centimeter. Here it is. Ready? One centimeter is one one hundredth of a meter. Okay? Think about that. I could do this in terms of money. One penny is one one hundredth of a dollar. Isn't that right? There are a hundred pennies in a dollar. One penny is one one hundredth of a dollar. So one centimeter is one one hundredth of a meter, which can be written as either way, one one hundredth meter. And ah, this is our first little gander at hundredths. Okay, so this first zero is in the ones place. Then we have the decimal point, tenths place, and hundredths place. So this right here, this whole thing, we would read as one hundredth meter. Yes. Notice this, one hundredth meter in fraction. Ah, tricky, not tricky, nice. This is a meter stick, what is its length? It's one meter, ah! How many centimeters are in that meter? I just said it about 15 times. Yes, it's a hundred, okay. So a hundred centimeters, so one meter equals 100 centimeters. Write that, not on yourself, write it on something, or write it in your brain, remember that. One meter, 100 centimeters, okay. So a meter is made up of 100 centimeters. So what fraction of a meter is one centimeter? It's a hundredth. Yes, it's one hundredth. One hundredth of a meter is one centimeter. Getting it? One hundredth of a dollar is one penny. We see the connection with money, which we do make later in this uh, module, but you'll see. So one centimeter is one hundredth meter. It's nice when we're dealing with ones, but you know I'm not going to leave it that way. No. Nope. All right, here it is as decimals now, or as a decimal. So one hundredth meter is one centimeter is one hundredth meter. One hundredth meter, one hundredth meter. Got it? The one is in the hundredth place, so I read this number as one hundredth. Now again, I've mentioned this before, but just in case you're just getting on the bus, um, when we ask how do we write this, that's when you would say 0 0.01. But if I'm saying what's this number or read this number, then you read it as a math number, you say 100th. Moving on. Now, let's do three centimeters. So we know that's gonna be three, right? What fraction of a meter is three centimeters? Well, if one was 100th, then three is 300th. And here it is as a decimal. So three centimeters is 300th meter. 300th meter. Ah, yes. How about 40? Oh, man, we had to go right to the double digits. 40 centimeters. It's going to be the same thing. Breathe. It's okay. 40 centimeters is 40 hundredths meter. Is 40 hundredths meter. 40 hundredths meter, 40 hundredths meter, also known as 40 centimeters. Make it a song. Send it in. You'll be a star. All right. <sighs> now, boy, I can't leave well enough alone, can I? Look at this here, 40 hundredths meter. How many tenths of a meter is that? Well, if we were dividing this by 10 tenths to find an equivalent fraction, yeah, good thing you were paying attention then when we did equivalent fractions because you need it now. So 40 hundredths meter, yes, divide by 10 tenths and you get 4 tenths. So 40 hundredths of a meter would be 4 tenths. Think again in terms of money. 40 pennies would be four dimes. <gasps> 40 cents, 40 cents, 40 centimeters. It all ties together. You have 10 fingers. Count them. So four tenths meter is 40 hundredths meter. Great. And so on. All right. 
Look at this now. We can write 4 tenths meter as a decimal or a fraction. These are all equivalents. I want to point out equals, 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 equals. These are all the same distance. If I said show me, this is, oh sorry, 40 centimeters. I said show me 40 centimeters, let's say about yay. And then I said, that's 40 centimeters, okay. Then I said show me 4 tenths meter, same thing. 40 hundredths meter, same thing. 4 tenths meter, 40 hundredths, yeah, it's all the same thing. Bask in the glory of it all. Moving on. Now we're going to name hundredths as tenths and some hundredths, stating the number and fraction in decimal form, which sounds like Pow! But again, we're going to hearken back to money. Tenths are dimes. Tenths are dimes. They're ten dimes in a dollar. Pennies are hundredths. There are a hundred pennies in a dollar. So watch how this works in practice. Now we're going to be doing it with the meter stick, but I'm going to keep relating it to money because I find that helpful. So if I first measure two-tenths of this meter, two-tenths of it, and then another five hundredths, okay, that's two tenths of the meter and five hundredths meter. Well, we know from our work with fractions that we can't just like <sighs> crash these together and call it 25 ten thousand one hundredths or something maddening like that. Hmm, we must do something. What is it we must do? Well, we have to think of them in the same terms. So look, the two, I'll go back for a sec. Two tenths. 20 hundredths. Do you see that? Because what we're doing is times 10 tenths to find equivalent fractions. 2 tenths, 20 hundredths. Now we can just let worlds collide. 20 hundredths, 5 hundredths together is 25 hundredths meters. I bet we can write that as a decimal, can't you? 25 hundredths. You can write the number. Here's the trick. Write the number 25 such that it ends in the hundredths place. 25 hundredths. 25 hundredths. The 5 is in the hundredths place. So I read this number. 25. What place am I in? Hundredths. That's how you read those decimal numbers. And look at that. Zingo zangle. Just like that. Boom. You're on the problem set. Okay. And this is a similar to what we did with the meter stick, except that I wasn't shading it in. I'm just referring to the points on it, so it's the same idea there. What fraction of a meter is one centimeter? That's abso smurfly what we were just doing, the exact same question. And here it is, dividing it up into ten tenths, yes, okay, or ten hundredths, I should say, of the meter. Um, fill in the blanks. A tenth is how many hundredths? Again, think a dime is how many pennies? Here again, look, one dime is how many pennies? Two dimes is 20. Yeah, you see how the relation to money works here? Think again here, it's a dime and three pennies is 13 pennies, is 13 cents. <whistles> see how it helps you to use that relation to money, meters to centimeters, and just the raw numbers to help you understand this and do it. More of the same here, using the same directions from, from number three there, okay? Um, on this one, you're going to shade in first eight tenths, seven hundredths, nineteen hundredths. Okay, so eight tenths is going to obviously be eight of these boxes, right? Because there are ten of them. When you do seven hundredths, will you use even one box? No, because this is, we could call this a couple of things, but I can call it ten hundredths, right? This is a dime or ten pennies. It's one tenth, it's ten hundredths. So seven hundredths is not even going to be one box. Okay, so you will not go out, because this is an error I've seen, you will not go out seven of these boxes. That would be seven tenths, and this is seven hundredths. Same thing here with nineteen hundredths. There's ten, and then nine out of ten of this box. Obviously, you can't go out nineteen boxes. That ain't nineteen. All right. Looking at this one, you're going to draw a number bond, pulling out the tenths from the hundredths. Uh, you know what number bonds look like, but you're going to say how many tenths? Well, let's we'll kind of do one orally together here. Look at 19 hundredths. So look at the one here. That's one tenth, right? We could call it 10 hundredths or one tenth. So I would draw out a line, say, hey, here's one tenth, and that leaves nine hundredths. So the number bond would be one tenth, nine hundredths. With that in mind, uh, another way of thinking about it in terms of money, one dime, nine pennies, nine tenths, 
uh, sorry, <laughs> one tenth, nine hundredths. So same thing here, two dimes and eight pennies, seven dimes and seven pennies, nine dimes and four pennies. You get to exit ticket, it's the same thing, but in abbreviated form. And when you get to homework, hop on over to my homework time videos because this is all the same stuff, but I walk you through each and every of one of those examples one at a time in detail. And look at what you've done now. You've gone and completed yet another lesson time. Congratulations to you and I both and to Ashlyn out there in New Ritchie, Florida. Keep the faith, sister, and I will see you all again next time. It is once again, lesson time. Yeah.